What is autism? It's the age-old question that we're going to explore today. My name is Alex and welcome my neurodiverse and neurotypical friends to What the Fundamentals is Autism. So before we even begin to discuss what autism is, we must first understand the brain. Now I'm no neurosurgeon, but luckily we only need to know about two types of brains. What a neurotypical brain is, but more importantly, what a neurodiverse or otherwise known as a neurodivergent brain is. The neurotypical brain is a brain that has developed in a quote unquote normal way without any abnormalities or atypical differences in its wiring. Your neurons, the internal wiring system that enables the flow of signals from the brain to the body, as well as all responses to emotions, memory, sensation, muscles, or etc., is structured and functions normally. Or perhaps more fittingly, typically. This means you are not one to be on the autism spectrum, or ADHD for that matter. However, in order to be at all applicable for autism, we must be neurodiverse or also known as neurodivergent. This means our internal wiring system is not structured the same as the neurotypical brain, rather quite differently. As a result, our processing is fundamentally different to that of our neurotypical peers. Our thinking to our emotions, sensations, language interpretation, and even our personal interests are ultimately influenced by our neurodiverse brains as we literally experience day-to-day -day life differently than the average neurotypical person. Without a neurodiverse brain, one does not simply have autism. Whew. So now we got that out of the way, we can finally get to it. The question you've all been waiting for, what is autism? Well, it's like an umbrella. Hear me out. Unlike autism's not so distant cousin ADHD, there is a lacking in a fundamental definition for autism. Unlike ADHD, which can be described fundamentally as based within two possible conditions, hyperactivity and or inattentiveness, autism is not only one or a few key conditions, but instead is an umbrella term for a near endless combination of interchangeable comorbidities. Question, what are comorbidities? Glad you asked. Comorbidities are one or more subconditions that can coexist and are additional representations of a greater primary condition. But for the sake of avoiding medical jargon, let's call these comorbidities elements. When looking at autism as our primary condition, we can start to better understand what autism is through its associative elements. So, there are a few <coughs> elements that are commonly associated with autism. Anxiety, depression, developmental advancement or delay, motor difficulties, clumsiness, social difficulties, sensory issues, difficulties with sleep, executive dysfunction, fixated interests, obsessive compulsive disorder, just to name a few. In diagnosis, it is tested whether you show a handful of these elements that are commonly associated with autism as if you do not, it's unlikely that you're autistic or neurodivergent for that matter. However, while these are some of the more common elements, there are also many other elements that are possibly comorbid with autism. Synesthesia, sensory processing disorder, auditory processing disorder, alexithymia, gastrointestinal intellectual epilepsy, is where the myriad of possible combinations come in. Because while there are so many possible comorbid elements with autism, not all are present for everyone. If an umbrella was representative of one's autism, the difference of the resulting umbrellas from person to person would be so unique of each other due to the hundreds, if not thousands of combinations that could possibly encompass one's autism. For example, my own personal umbrella would consist of anxiety, sensory processing disorder, social difficulties, OCD, auditory processing disorder, eating disorder, alexithymia, dermatophagia. The list goes on, but that's what my umbrella looks like. Cool. 
But how do I learn more about what autism is? Well, that's where we go deep web. You didn't think I started this channel for nothing, did you? Autism is complicated. Not even the medical world can agree on what autism fundamentally is. But at least now you have a fundamental understanding of what it is and means to be diagnosed with autism. If this is still confusing, just believe me when I say that there is many of us who are diagnosed who are equally confused. We never left the doctor's office with a brochure or a pamphlet, at least not where I'm from. Even the doctors and psychologists don't know where to start when you're diagnosed with autism. It's one huge well of understanding what kind of autistic individual you are, and that can take years, if not your entire lifetime to discover. And when there is help and support available for autism, it's only directed at children. I mean, do I look like a child to you? Don't answer that. So if you're infuriated that you haven't gotten a straight answer about what is autism, just know you're not the first and you're certainly not the last. Most of us are too, and we're learning every day what it truly means to be on the spectrum, what it means to be a neurodiverse brain in a neurotypically functioning world. But it's okay. It really is. That's all for this one. And I suppose my question for you is, what's your umbrella? Let me know below if you're feeling comfortable. Subscribe if you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.